I'm doing these videos on YouTube called Yoga with Adrian, mm. but I think like just from engineering so much, my back is so shredded and my shoulders and it's very good, but also like realizing that I haven't just spent time breathing for probably 30 years is uh, it's a big one. That's huge. I think just day to day, I'm not breathing like enough. Like my inhales and exhales are always very shallow. Yeah, me too. And also like noticing Chris, where I'm breathing. Yeah, I, it's I, like, I've been like that my whole life, I think. I remember, I, as a, I remember as a kid when I did like a little bit of theater, I had some theater coach telling me that I, I breathed like a smoker. <laughs> and, and I was like, you know, 13 or something. I once heard this like it was like a trumpet player in at like music camp. He was talking about how when you're a baby, you watch babies' chests like rise and fall, and they breathe like all the way to the bottom of their belly. And then as you get older, your breathing just gets higher and higher and higher until you're just breathing into like here. Mm. And that's what I do all the time. And then when I it's do those yoga proof, classes, it's more proof that children or baby or babies especially know how to do everything right, and we just devolve as we get older. Hundred percent. Joseph, though, don't you uh, get a lot of practice breathing when you're doing like circular breathing with the soprano sets? I mean, maybe this is a good time to plug my longest note performance that I'm doing right after our set for Wavelength. So I'm hoping to break Ken Ken Kenny's record. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should do like a clapboard and now like address our viewership. Oh, like, okay. Hello. Mm. Welcome to the Joseph Shabison and or the Shabison Kurgovich and Harris show. Why don't we just rebrand as the Joseph Shabison show? I think I've been meaning to actually approach <laughs> that with you guys. <laughs> okay, welcome to the very first Shabison Kurgovich and Harris concert as part of the Wavelength Music Festival. Deeply it honored is a, to be here. With yeah, the amazing. Beverly which profit? Glenn Copeland. Yeah. And which profit? Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy.
got from Phil And the heavy duvet When you make the bed And I make it again It makes me smile Louis freaking out in the background, by I the way. I just heard it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was <laughs> losing his mind up there. <laughs> no, I, I heard something that I thought was like a like a smoke alarm, and it was driving me crazy, and I, I realized it was just water dripping in the kitchen. Um, but it drove me totally insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, give Jason? me one sec, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might I'll have to... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Dude is losing it. One sec. <laughs> Jason well, just whatever. came down to change the battery on our smoke detector because since the summertime, sporadically it'll just in the middle of the night, middle of the night only, it'll go. Meep. Oh, I know. I oh my God. <clears throat> nightmare. Every thirty seconds. Meep. Absolute nightmare. And so you have to get up and like press the button to reset it. When you unscrew it, I couldn't even find out where you put the battery in. So I was just like, the wires were hanging down. My arm was up like this. So I was just like, whatever. And I just put it back. But he finally came and like figured out how to do it. And now there's a new battery in there. And this will never happen again. After getting up in the middle of the night, almost every other night for months. Oh. <laughs> months? Months. It's like having a child. Yeah. <laughs> and then, because and it's got to the point where, like, no matter what kind of sleep I'm in, I'll hear it go meep, once, and I'll just like wake up and like go press the button. <laughs> I know it's a, it's, a, it's an anticipation that I that my mind cannot, yes. I I can't let it go. Yeah. If I'm if oh, I'm yeah. expecting it or waiting for it to happen, I it just like my thoughts are consumed with this thing that's about to happen. <laughs> so let's throw it to the next song, <laughs> <laughs> which is. Or smash it, I don't see them in. Oh, that's right. No. So I want to say something about this song that I'm not sure if you guys would be as tapped into. Louis, my son, loves it. He always asked me to text Nick and ask him why he can't see the moon. And then, like, I've had at least five or six other parents say that their toddlers request that song just on repeat. Mm -hmm. So if for whatever reason, you wrote a smash hit for toddlers.
This is the it's, oldest conversation. <laughs> I love it. It's it's too real. And I can't, yeah. Joe, you're talking about yoga and running. I haven't been able to run for like two months because I have like a hip issue. <laughs> I'm, and I hate my physiotherapy exercises. I do do them and they only take about four or five minutes a day, but I hate it. Like putting that rubber band around like a tenth uh, oh, yeah. and then like doing a squat and like walking around the house. Can I ask a serious question for both of you? Because you're both runners. Is there a point where it becomes like you can go on a long run and it doesn't feel exhausting? Like it's enjoyable, the running? Yes. Yeah. It's always yeah. just been like a huge struggle for me. I've always done other things, swimming. But you're a, you're a swimmer. And, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's just the way it happens. Certain people just kind of like veer to certain activities. So it's, it means nothing. It's just the thing that you like. And for whatever reason, just doing this is, I guess works for Joe and I. I guess I have had kind of a similar experience with swimming where we would go to the outdoor pool that was like 150 meters or whatever it is. There got to be a point where my body just sort of figured out how to how to handle the pressure of the swimming, I guess. You know, like it 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 didn't feel like I was gonna drown at all times and I could kind of keep going. Even if I felt tired, it just I, I got over that point where I where it felt mm. felt like terrible and scary almost. What's, What's next? Uh, oh, Friday afternoon. What can we say about Friday afternoon? Love. 
Can I guess what car you have? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Please. I I I actually am not sure, but I I'm gonna say uh, like a Corolla, something like that. That's what I was gonna say. Close. I was gonna say like a like a 2004 Corolla. So close. It's an Can... 06 Matrix, <laughs> but basically the same thing. And I love yeah. that because it's so out of line with my aesthetics, but it's so in line with my feelings about cars and like what I can afford and what I need to have. In my mind, I would love to drive like a beautiful like 1984 like Mercedes station wagon or something. But in the meantime, can I, can I guess your dream car or what? Yeah, yeah, please. So in my mind, if I picture like the most luxurious version of you, I picture sort of like like a version of you, but like 19, like like late 80s, early 90s, but like in a really nice suit working in a financial job. And then you have one of those older style cell phones and you step into one of those really beautiful Saab turbo hatchbacks with like the tan leather interior, but the green exterior, which is also one of my dream cars. But I think you would suit that car beautifully. Bless you. Thank you. I do like it, like a mar- I like a maroon station wagon kind of situation. Those ones from the like I like an ET car. Like I like the mom from ET. Like something that she would drive. If that was that's the more dipey version of what we're talking about. Also, <laughs> <laughs> this next song is the title track off of our album. It's called Philadelphia, and it's a cover of a Neil Young song that I. Nick and I talked about this, but it's my favorite version of Philadelphia. I like it more than Bruce's. But Nick was saying that he liked both equally. He doesn't have a favorite. That's correct. Did Karen play the symbol on this one? Because I would just like to say to the record that I played the symbol on that album. (laughs) So this is funny because usually you're not precious over ownership of things. But for whatever reason... Like you've gone to bat for letting people know that you played that symbol on multiple it's not occasions. Even good. It's not even good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take you down a notch, which is that I had to quantize it a couple of times. Oh, a couple oh, of sure you did. <laughs> Even as I was playing it, I'm like, this is off.
Oh, I have a question, uh, Chris. Yes. Bare feet. Yeah. Well, if you'll notice, though, uh, only in three of the four songs. Oh, I, okay, I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I went back and forth on that one, but it was it was comfortable for playing the pedal steel, and then I just decided to stick with it. I felt unsure, but then I started Googling performers who perform barefoot. And one of the first ones I found was Chardet, so I felt okay about it. Oh, she does? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't like, I wear socks like. Cindy Lauper. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. You do, you have a yoga practice. So it makes sense for you. <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for every. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for tuning in and watching us play. Uh, it was a treat. And thank you to Wavelength. Yeah, thanks yeah, to thank Wavelength. You, thanks to Beverly Glenn Copeland and Witch Prophet. Yeah, this is actually the Shabbleson, Kurgovich, Harris, Gill, Gillen. Adams. Yeah. Show. We, sh we should definitely acknowledge the fact that this show, but also the entire album, would not have been possible without those guys. Just were wonderful. We didn't thank Derek for doing the video. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go eat dinner. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, nice Joe. See you. Bye. Bye.